Okay, um, we are going to begin our community outreach conversation. I want to say hello to everyone who's joining us on this Facebook Live community outreach team conversation, which is how to get help and how to help. Um, my name is Gabriel or Gabe McPhail. I work for the town of Vinyl Haven as the community development and engagement coordinator, and I'm currently serving as the Emergency Operations Center Community Outreach Volunteer Coordinator. So I'm here on Zoom with my community outreach team member, Pat Lundholm, who's the town's former EMS director. And Pat is currently serving as the Emergency Operations Center Public Information Officer. Pat is at home and I am actually at the Emergency Operations Center. So welcome, Pat. Hi, Gabe. It's good to be having this conversation. Uh, how are you doing today? Um, I am doing pretty well. Uh, I'd say my spirits are good, but I think like most people, I'm really tired. Uh, I also notice that like really since this has started, I just have so much like anxiety and tension in my chest and shoulders. But um, like I said, my spirits are good. And I do think that uh, working um, in ways that seem helpful is helping me manage stress right now. So thanks for asking. How about you? How are you doing today? Me, yeah, I had a uh, late morning walk to State Beach today and I was so happy while I was there. There was one mom with her two young children. They were having a good time in the sand. It was very easy to keep proper distances and I realized how completely lucky that we all are to live in this beautiful place. There's so much public access that we won't have to be in Acadia and close it off. There's plenty for all of us and it was a gorgeous day. Yeah, that's, that's really great. I, I really appreciate that too. I know there's so much to be grateful for um, and especially that we have a lot of, uh, a lot of beautiful, uh, amazing world around us here that we can access without it being closed off. So thanks for sharing that, Pat. Um, before we dive in, um, could, could you tell us a little bit about the Emergency Operations Center, or as we call it, the EOC? So can you tell folks, like, what is the EOC? Yeah. Um, the EOC is sort of a command central for managing an emergency. Um, the basic organization of an EOC was developed by FEMA after the 9-11 bombing. And what it does is to make a consistent organization of command that anyone involved in emergencies anywhere would recognize. Our EOC is located at the town office. Um, it serves as a resource and information center. It's the home base for the public health team and the community outreach team. Um, besides just being a well-organized process, the system protocol enables us to be eligible for FEMA disaster relief funding. While we're at the EOC, we are all using CDC safe workplace guidelines, such as staying at least six feet apart at all times. Uh, desks are well spaced. We have temperature checks. We wash our hands frequently as well as use san hand sanitizer. Um, coughing and sneezing into elbows, et cetera. If any of you wanna know more about the CDC's recommended guidelines for preventing the spread of COVID-19, you can go to the CDC website. There is a link from the town's COVID-19 page. You're gonna learn more about that tonight, which can be accessed from the homepage. Well, that's great, that's really good information, thank you. Um, so how about the public health team? Can you tell folks who the public health team is? Sure, um, there are four people on the public health team. Um, town manager, Andy Dorr, um, the public health officer, Jen Desmond from ICMS, she's the town's public health officer. Um, emergency management agency director, Mark Candidge, he's on not as fire chief so much, but because of the extensive training he has had in emergency management and he's the director for the town. And our new, um, newish um, EMS director, Carrie McKee, and we're very glad, or I am personally very glad that she is here and it's not me. Um, so this group of four people, um, their job is to keep informed about the threat of COVID-19 to Vinyl Haven and plan and implement best practices for protecting the community. They've done an amazing amount 
of uh, aggressive amount of work um, in a very short, very short time. And they are all four are tireless in their pursuits. Yeah, that's for sure. I think it's an amazing team. We're very, very fortunate to, to have them as a community. Hey, can, can you tell us about COT? Yeah, COT, the Community Outreach Team. Um, and we have a, we have a, a handy acronym. Um, so what the job of the Community Outreach Team is, is to provide support for the needs of the entire community uh, during this pandemic. Um, and when we say entire community, we really want to stress that we are here for everyone. We don't, um, we don't overlook anyone. So our goal really is to make sure that the information that goes out to the community from the town is current, uh, that it's true, it's factual. Um, we also work with everyone and anyone, whether it's community leaders, businesses, organizations, individuals, uh, to support whatever help people are offering. Um, so we, you know, we help people help other people. Um, and then to fill in gaps uh, as we as we are uh, as we see them or as people let us know that they exist. Um, so besides uh, you and me on the COT team, uh, Tanya Robichaud and Jana Cabarro's work uh, with us as support staff. So what did the COT get up to this past week? Yeah, so this has been sort of hit the ground running, of course, for for everybody. I know not just for. Um, the emergency operations center. So um, really, we just started um, getting things going this past weekend. So we're one week in, um, and we've really focused on communications. Um, so primarily getting out um, a daily update. So some of the topics that we present uh, daily have been uh, sort of general COVID-19 information, like how it's different uh, from the flu, we also talked about select board recommendations in terms of like how we ought to behave as a community. Um, and these are based again on facts, CDC guidelines. Um, and even just yesterday, we talked about um, managing anxiety. So those are just a few of the things that we've talked about in our daily updates. Um, we also put together a list of local resources for getting help and giving help. And that's what this conversation is based on. So and that's a dynamic list that we keep um, updating and adding to and changing. Um, we're also helping groups and individuals in the community who need help providing help, as I, as I said earlier, um, like helping them find volunteers, um, helping them really with whatever they're doing to help others. Um, and then we are also available to help anyone who wants to reach out with a need or a request for help or a request to volunteer. Can you uh, show us some of that information on your screen? Yeah, sure. Um, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and do a screen share so folks can see um, the town of Vinyl Haven contact information for the EOC. So do you see that, Pat? I do, it's nice and clear. Um, so this is just gives the website, www.townofvinylhaven.org. Um, our phone number here at the EOC. Um, people can call and leave a message if we are not here and able to take your call. Um, and the best way to reach us really is this email. So it's bheoc at townofvinylhaven.org. And uh, we check that throughout the day. So um, if you want to reach us with a question or a request or a concern, that's really the ideal way. Um, obviously, if you're watching this live stream live on Facebook, you know we have a Facebook page. Um, that's just Town of Vinyl Haven. Uh, we also have an Instagram, which is Town of Vinyl Haven. And we have a YouTube channel. So these posts can be watched um, later. We'll save them and post them to our YouTube channel. And people can find that just by going to YouTube and searching Town of Vinyl Haven. Um, I also wanted to say that you can subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get notifications each time we put up a, uh, one of these live conversations or one of the live streamed um, recordings of a select board meeting. All right, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a minute. Okay, and we are gonna dive in to how to get help. Um, 
Pat, let's talk about it. Where can folks in need get help on the island? Well, before we start, I want to say that um, like with any emergency or tough time that we have seen on Vinyl Haven, our community rallies and what we're experiencing now is no exception. Um, we see organizations, businesses, individuals, everyone is stepping up and doing whatever they can to prevent the spread of the virus and support those in need. So I really want to give a shout out to everyone who is helping in whatever way they can. This has been an incredible effort. Yeah, three cheers, three cheers for that. I really, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, a, we have an amazing community and people are truly rallying. So um, we created a resource guide for Vinyl Haven that's available on our website as a download. Um, and we also have the same information as links on our website. Information is being updated as often as it changes. So I, I'd like to invite folks to contact us if they have, if they have anything um, they want to add or change. Great. Um, so Pat, what I thought I'd do is just go ahead and um, share the web page with folks. And I have gotten a couple, I just want to say, I've gotten a couple messages uh, from folks saying that they haven't been able to access the live stream on Facebook. Um, I, I'm able to see it um, on the Town of Vinyl Haven webpage. If for some reason um, you are unable to see it, folks out there, um, you can also try um, my, um, my homepage, my individual homepage, because I believe it's also streaming up there. Facebook is still a mysterious world to me. So um, my, my Facebook is Gabriel Lane. So if uh, for some reason you do not see it on uh, live streamed on Town of Vinyl Haven Facebook homepage, um, try that and hopefully, uh, hopefully you will be able to see it. And if not, um, we will be posting the uh, link on the website and you can also uh, go to YouTube Town of Vinyl Haven and we will be posting the recording there. So I apologize in advance if people are unable to access that. So like I said, I am going to go ahead and do another screen share um, with you. And what I'm gonna do is just go to the Town of Vinyl Haven website. Pat, are you able to see that? I can see that, yeah. Super. Okay, so um, I thought what we do is since we're talking about the resource guide is we'll just show folks um, how to access it from the website. So um, there's a lot of COVID-19 on the website and that's just to try to make it easy for folks to get to the information. So I can access it from the menu bar, which is here, or I can access it here from this uh, image, or just in case you missed it, um, there's also a link down here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click up here in the menu bar. And this brings us to the, the COVID-19 resource page. And everything that we're talking about today really is on this page. Um, I, I do wanna say that this is also a work in progress for the community outreach team. We're, we're trying to update this and make sure we have um, you know, more of the local information on here and just it's a it's a work in progress so bear with us as we continue to add and build and try to get you folks the most updated information but for the sake of today what we're talking about really is um, this resources for coping with the COVID-19 pandemic so um, when you click on this you get to uh, a downloadable PDF version I'm going to go ahead and click on it um, the good thing about this if you don't want to print it out um, you uh, can just use it online and these hyperlinks are all active. So you can just go ahead and click on any of these to access the resources. Um, the, um, I was gonna say that if, if you know somebody who doesn't know about this and maybe you know, could use the information, um, you know, feel free to print it out. Um, we do really advise people who are sharing anything, like passing something along, use all the safe CDC protocols, even if you're just printing out something and getting it to somebody else. Um, so clean hands, uh, 
making sure you use hand sanitizer when you're handling things before and after. And then if you're getting something to somebody, you know, arrange to leave it on their doorstep, um, always be sure to stay six feet apart, et cetera. So um, we want the information to get out there, but in a safe way. Um, I think that's all I'll say about it. And we can just go ahead and dive in, Pat. Sure. So here we have all the vinyl information that you just shared, Gabe. And then we have all of the state and federal information for factual information about the virus, including the CDC and the main CDC. We have vinyl haven options for direct financial assistance next. Um, the one that suggested that people access first is uh, general assistance. That's a state-backed program for towns to provide help with financial assistance for basic needs. And if that um, is your choice, the contact for general assistance program is uh, town manager Andy Dorr, and he can be reached at 863-2042. Um, Penquist Low Income Assistance Program is another option. Um, they're at 1207-973-3630. Um, and there are, uh, moving on, many organizations and groups in town doing amazing work to make sure people have access to food. Uh, we're listing a few of them here and how to contact them directly to get the help you need. Um, the Brown Door, that's the food pantry at the Union Church. Um, community Lunchbox is delivering prepared meals. There's Meals on Wheels, Open Bible um, Baptist Church's Coronavirus Relief Fund is delivering food to anyone in need. The school is doing, um, well, they're all doing an amazing job, but the school um, has a very big load and is delivering um, uh, breakfasts and lunches for all students who have signed up, as well as their younger non-school age siblings. Um, and also, ICMS is paying for all deliveries from in-town businesses. So if you need something from a business delivered to you, um, call Vinyl Haven Taxi. The number's listed here. And Carver's, um, I'm sure we've all um, been in touch with Carver's in the last week, and they're offering curbside or delivery of their groceries. Uh, contact information is here as well. Great. Yeah, thanks, Pat. Okay. Lots of uh, great work out there around uh, getting people meals, prepared meals, and, and staples. Um, so help paying bills. Um, these, of course, are just a few of the bills we have to pay, um, our utility bills. And um, this is you know, not a comprehensive list, but it's um, sort of what, what we are uh, looking at is essentially like heat and electric and water, sewer, um, phone, internet. Um, so what I would say is that, you know, the bottom line is, um, companies are, are being really flexible right now. Uh, they're willing to do payment plans. A lot of them are offering special services like no late fees, no interruption in service due to non-payment. Um, so if you, if you need help paying utility bills, um, I would say read through this information and then uh, reach out to the companies that uh, you get service from and ask them for details and answers to specific questions. And I think, like I said, everyone is amenable right now and willing to work with folks. So that's help with paying utility bills. Yesterday um, in our daily update, we had, um, we talked about handling stress and anxiety um, which I'm sure we are all experiencing. Um, we're on this um, resource page, we're listing some state resources, but we recommend that you use your local connections as well. So your church has pastoral care, um, talking to close friends and family, reaching out to ICMS. Um, ICMS is getting ready to uh, be able to talk with counseling clients over the phone and with Zoom. So counseling on island is still an option. You'll just do it remotely. Um, please get the help and assistance that you need. Yeah, very important. Um, I, I wanted to share a little bit about uh, help for businesses and nonprofits and churches. So um, this link here uh, for the Island Institute um, brings you to a, a wealth of information that they've put together 
um, primarily for small businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, and it's a, a, a lot around financial assistance and sort of transitioning to the digital economy, like how you can still um, figure out how to conduct business even if you can't open your doors to the public. Um, one of the things that I thought was great is they have a fund that they normally um, use for grants for professional development. And they have transitioned that to be a $1,500 grant to small businesses um, or on, you know, entrepreneurs. You can be a sole proprietor. Um, you, don't, you don't need to be like a business with employees. Um, but that $1,500 grant um, is now available for technical assistance, um, things like building a website, um, getting an online store up and running. So I think that's a great resource, especially for people that are trying to transition really quickly to having a digital presence and, and being able to do business online. Um, one of the other um, great resources out there is MAMP, which is the main association of nonprofits. And we have so many um, nonprofit organizations on the island. Um, and MAMP has compiled a great list of you know, how nonprofits can um, navigate through this time. So that link is up there. And then we put up the CDC uh, guidance for churches and faith-based faith organizations, excuse me. Um, and that just really gives a lot of basic information on safe ways that um, uh, churches can still um, conduct uh, their day-to-day their -day operations, especially since a lot of churches um, work with vulnerable populations. And I will say um, our churches out here are doing an amazing job at you know, um, keeping their folks safe. So um, thank you all, all of you out there for doing that. Um, so that is um, our Vinyl Haven, how to get help. Um, so now let's move on. So how you can help a lot of people are wanting to be useful and let's talk about some of those ways great i think the most important thing to start off with is that we all need to be responsible and prevent the spread of this virus that's the best way to help the most important way you can help um, and so just as a reminder uh, stay home Travel only when necessary, whether downtown or off island. Practice physical distancing by staying at least six feet away from others. Always avoid touching. Wash your hands, clean surfaces well and often. If you cough or sneeze, do it into your elbow. Keep track of your temperature. We urge everyone, no matter your age, to follow these guidelines. Encourage and help your family and friends to and you can get all the information you need about best practices, do's and don'ts on the CDC website. So that's the first and foremost way to help. But here's some other stuff you can do. Um, tonight's evening post, so there'll be more things online um, after seven tonight, uh, is gonna offer some ideas about how we can help and support each other. You must always remember to volunteer in a safe way. Um, and we have resources for best practices for doing things like making deliveries um, and keeping ourselves and spaces clean there on our website. Um, so connecting with others. Um, Zoom is the uh, video conferencing tool that many people on Vinyl Haven, including committees, town committees, and, and um, even tonight, um, are using to talk with and have, be in the presence and be with people. Um, Besides what you'll read tonight, the Island Institute's COVID-19 resource page includes information about the tools of video conferencing, um, and that is at islandinstitute.org slash coronavirus. Of course, um, people are already doing this, but reaching out to uh, community groups and individuals to see if they need help, calling friends, relatives, neighbors, doing kind things, thanking people for all that they're doing, really recognizing those businesses that are um, stressed completely, but are making every effort to help us. If you're part of a group or an organization, you might create a phone tree or a call list for members of your group. Call one person a day or five people a day. Use your existing networks to make regular contact with people. Check in, make sure they're okay. I had two messages on my phone when I came home yesterday. It's like, 
first time there've ever been that many that weren't somebody trying to sell me something. It was very nice. Um, the town has a, what we call the pandemic storm call list that includes folks that may be less connected or not able to get out or about, um, less connected so that they're not getting the um, internet connection that we are all used to. Um, and we contact these folks on a regular basis to make sure they're okay, to answer questions and to listen. EMS team has been doing that. Um, ICMS is going to pick it up. Others may be able to help with that. If you know any, if you yourself or you know anyone that would like that phone call um, or would benefit from it, please let us know. Uh, another way that we are not talking about tonight, but is, I mean, in our update tonight, um, is, is the idea of donating to groups and organizations that are listed here, as well as any other groups and organizations working to support our community. They are definitely needed donations to sustain the efforts of all the local groups who are helping. If you have anything to spare, you can contact the folks here and they will be very grateful. Um, pay it forward. Um, that's another donating kind of thing by supporting businesses that have been required to close their doors to the public. Utilize takeout and curbside to go services. Purchase merchandise from business websites. Buy a gift card or gift certificate and pass it along to someone in need. If you're buying groceries or paying a bill, ask the business if they'll take some extra money to go toward paying for someone else's goods or services. It's kind of like um, rounding up or a suspended, suspended coffee. We also um, greatly appreciate your sharing ideas with us so we can support those ideas and pass them on. Just today, we got a great informational link on the disease. It's a, an hour long um, video from a pulmonologist, um, and we'll probably post it tomorrow. Um, but it's really good information um, in more detail than we're putting in, in little sound bites. Uh, we also got an offer by a gardener to grow some extra seedlings for folks who might like to plant some things this spring. A good way to be outside and also grow some food. Um, and she will, um, well, we'll be hearing more about her extra seedlings. Finally, we want to uh, focus on facts, not fear, by getting reliable and credible information from the town of Idlehaven, from the CDC and the Maine CDC, from Maine Public Radio, that's at 90.5 FM, and WMEP offers reliable COVID-19 information as well as mainepublic.org. Great, uh, lots of good resources. Um, and I actually posted on the uh, town page today, um, Maine Public's uh, Maine Calling um, did a show yesterday and I think they rebroadcast it today, but you can live stream it um, from there or you can stream the recording from their website and I put the link up there, but it's exactly on this topic just from the statewide perspective. Um, how Mainers are helping Mainers and uh, really good information. I found it really good to, um, you know, we're, we're here sort of looking in the island view, but it's good to sometimes look out and see what the rest of the state is doing. So that's, a, that's another great uh, listen um, and wealth of information. Um, the other thing I, I feel like uh, oh, something that we all can do uh, to help um, which I find a lot of times is a harder thing, uh, which is just really taking care of myself, uh, especially uh, during this time. Uh, Governor Mills uh, stressed that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, so the best way to start helping others, again, is to take care of yourself, uh, drink plenty of water, try to get enough sleep, uh, do something to de-stress on a daily basis. Pat, you mentioned going for a nice walk. Um, these are all relatively simple things, but they can be really hard to do. Even on a good day, they can be really hard to do. Um, but I, I think it's extra important uh, right now for all of us to you know, be at our best health and you know, be available um, for others to, to help them. Um, and I also wanna let people know that if they want to be of service, um, but they don't know how, if they're not connected to an existing organization or, or just don't, you know, don't exactly know what to do. Um, we are compiling a list of willing volunteers. We've already connected with a few of them. 
um, and we're trying what we're what we're trying to do is connect you with connect those volunteers with a job that you can do um, where you feel safe and you can do that job safely it might be things uh, like making phone calls maybe making deliveries in a safe way things like that um, so if you're not directly connected with an organization that's already doing stuff in, in need of your volunteer help uh, please reach out to us and we'll work with you to find a way you can help in a safe way um, also if you are a group or a business or an organization uh, trying to find ways to help um, let us know uh, we're really eager to work with you to come up with ideas that will work for you and the people that you work with um, and I'm going to stress again like use your existing networks uh, if you belong to like a book club or some kind of social group uh, Maybe all the members can call in and check in, check in on each other. Um, if you're a business or an organization, you can use your mailing list to reach out to folks, um, even if it's just to see like how they're doing um, and maybe connecting them with resources that you know about um, or even the ones that we've shared here or just simply the town website. Um, also, uh, I just, I think actually, I think that's, um, I think that's, all I'm going to say on on that end of, of how you can help. Um, so I did want to, before we close, Pat, I did want to uh, share a couple of things. Um, I'm going to I'm going to switch my screen back right now. Um, I think one of the uh, one of the great things that's happening right now is um, uh, people can access the wind online. I think the wind is uh, just it's such a great community resource and it, it's sort of a stable thing um, to to get to rely on getting that wind each week and uh, so I, I like it that we can still access it and I I just wanted to show people uh, really quickly how they can access it and now some people are getting a printed uh, copy and that's through um, the generosity of Sue and her Sue Radley and her team who are uh, safely making those paper copy deliveries, but um, what we wanted to do was just make it accessible online. So the town is hosting the wind, and so I'm just going to do a quick walkthrough so people can find it. So if you go to townofvinylhaven.org, uh, see this button in the center, just click that. And the first thing you're going to get to is the landing page for connect, and the wind is right here. Uh, the wind is also in the side navigation bar, but you can just click this. And this brings you to the win page. So all of the downloadable wins will be posted here. Uh, there are PDFs, so you can print them out uh, if you want to. If you do decide to print them out, um, we really want you to read all of this information here um, about the best practices for sharing the wind. And again, it's just, it goes along with this sort of, how do you deliver something safely to somebody, especially somebody in, you know, who's considered within the vulnerable population. So if you are gonna print and share, please please read this. You can download the information as a PDF, but if you want the wind, here it is. Um, the other thing I wanted to show folks really quickly um, is how you can get the daily update. Um, right now, we are posting it on Facebook by 7 p.m. each day. It's also, on our website um, at the same time but if you don't want to go and look um, on the website every day or if you're not on facebook every day and you just want an email with that link coming to you um, in your inbox uh, this is how you would do it on the town's homepage, you just click subscribe um, you put in your email you do a confirmation email and then all you need to do is click here town alerts um, if you want anything else sent to your inbox, now's a great time to sign up for those things. And then you you can say you're a robot if you want, but pr presumably you're not a robot because robots don't get alerts. But um, if you are human, click I'm not a robot and you can get an alert. And then you just say subscribe me and you will um, get the daily um, update in your email. Um, 
So that's how you do that. Um, so Pat, you had a little information you wanted to share about a live conversation with the public health team that we're having on Tuesday. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop screen sharing right now so you can tell us about that. Yep, that's uh, very exciting. On Tuesday, uh, March 21st at 530, um, the public health team, again, that's uh, Jen, Mark, Andy, and Carrie, We'll have a Facebook Live conversation just like this to answer your questions that are specific to the coronavirus and what the public health team is doing to prepare for the virus on Vinyl Haven. If you have questions that you'd like them to answer during their live conversation, please mail those questions to VHECO, that's Vinyl Haven um, ECO, at townofvinylhaven.org by 4 p.m. on Tuesday, March 31st. All right, that's great, Pat. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll just share our contact information again uh, so, so people have that and they can write it down if they're, um, if they're not right on the website already. So here's all that information. Um, so I just wanna thank everybody for joining us. I wanna thank Pat, my, my teammate here, um, for having this really important conversation and we will say good night to, to you folks. Thanks for joining us. See you too, Gabe. Good night. Good night.